Good day, students. Welcome back to class time. I'm Georgetta Thomas Legister, your CSEC Principles of Business teacher for this session. And today, we will be looking at logistics and supply chain. So get your book and a pen, and let's get started. Before we get into our lesson, let us examine the objectives we will be looking at today. So at the end of the lesson, we hope to achieve these objectives. So one, to explain the terms logistics and supply chain operations. Next, to describe the links in the distribution chain, to discuss the components of logistics and their roles, to outline various modes of transportation, and to explore the impact of logistics on competitiveness. So think about it. You have heard the term logistics before, but what is logistics really? Think about it, and I want you to write a definition of logistics, your own definition of the term logistics. Now, when you pass an 18-wheeler on the highway, when you shop in your local grocery store, when you collect a package at your door from Amazon.com, you are indeed having a logistics moment. So let us look at what logistics is. But before we go there, let me share one of my favorite logistics quote. The line between order and disorder lies in logistics. Sun Tzu, a Chinese military general. Now you might be wondering, logistics, military, what is this all about? What's the connection? Now, a little history of logistics. The term logistics derived from military activities during World War II and then gradually spread to the business world. So what we will focus on is business logistics. Now what is logistics? Now logistics may be defined as a process of planning, implementing and controlling the efficient, cost-effective flow and storage of raw materials, semi-finished goods, and related information from the point of origin to the point of consumption for the purpose of conforming to customers' requirements. Now, I know that's a mouthful, but as we go through, we'll, we'll understand more when we look at the different aspects related to logistics. Now, logistics is closely related to marketing. That's the lesson we looked at last time. So there will be some familiar terms and some new terms that you will learn today. Now, what is supply chain operations? When you hear of the supply chain, what comes to mind? Now, the supply chain is really a network between a company and its suppliers to produce and distribute a specific product. Now, there are basically four interrelated operations in the supply chain, and we looked at those when, we, when you were introduced to marketing. So, any idea what those interrelated operations are? I'm sure you know them. So we have the producer or the manufacturer, the wholesaler, the retailer, and the consumer. Now, the supply chain represents the steps taken to get the product or service to the customer. A supply chain shows the flow of information and materials across an organization. Now we will be looking at the, some key components of logistics. There are a number of components um, that are related to logistics. Now for the purpose of this lesson, we will focus on four of these components. Any idea what these components are? All right, write them down and compare with what we will discuss. Great. Now we'll be looking at procurement, inventory management. Can you guess what the other is? transportation, and warehousing. As I said, these are the key components. There are others, but for the purpose of this lesson, we will focus on these four. So let us look at procurement. When you hear the term procurement, what comes to your mind? And for most people, when they hear procurement, purchasing comes to mind. But procurement is a little more than just purchasing. It's basically the steps or the process that you have to go through in order to make that purchase. Remember, we're looking at it from the point of view of a business and not an individual standpoint, right? So 
when looking at products and prices, procurement is considered, right? Now, procurement is a process of finding, agreeing on terms and conditions, and acquiring goods, services, or work from an external source. Now, the process is used to ensure that the buyer receives goods, services, or work at the best possible price when a number of factors are considered. Factors such as quality, quantity, time, and we're talking about time of delivery, time a job will take to be completed, location, and other aspects are compared. So most business will have what you call a, a, a procurement committee. So this is a group of persons, mostly drawn from different departments in the business, who sit together and go through, um, go through quotations from different suppliers. So you're looking at things such as price, as I said earlier, the quality that the products will be made from, how soon will the products be delivered? What quantity do they have available? And you look at all these aspects, of course, the cost is also a crucial factor, but it cannot be the only factor. Now, the procurement committee would then decide which supplier gets the job, which supplier we actually buy goods from, right? Now, inventory. Have you ever heard the term inventory before? What comes to mind when you hear the term inventory? Right, so inventory is basically stock that the business hold, goods that you hold for resale. The business holds for resale, sorry, right? Now, inventory has to be managed. And you want to manage inventory, you want to ensure that you do not overstock. What happens when you overstock? Think about it and especially if it's a perishable item. Yes, so goods get expired, things become obsolete, right? You lose money, right? Now, on the other hand, if you understock, then it means you cannot meet the needs of your consumers. And of course, consumers have choices, so they will go elsewhere. So apart from losing money, you're losing your share of the market, and that's bad for business. So inventory management is crucial to the supply chain system. Now, inventory management is a practice, is a practice and of overseeing and controlling the ordering, storage, and use of components that a business uses in the production of items it sells. All right, and we covered that earlier. Now, it's so, it also oversees and control the quantities of finished products for sale. Now, transportation, and as we said, most people, when they hear about logistics, they think transportation, but I want to let you know that logistics is much more than just transportation. However, transportation is a crucial factor in an efficient logistics and supply chain system. So what do we know about transportation? We use transportation every day, right? Now, transportation is a key process in the logistics chain. Why is that so? Now, it is involved at every stage from the manufacturing of the product to its final delivery. So transportation is needed to take raw material into the factory for manufacturing. Transportation is also needed to take final goods or finished goods to the final consumer or to the intermediaries, the wholesalers, the retailers, right, to be accessed by consumers. Now, transportation is also useful to take workers to and from work, and that's important, right? Now, another important component of logistics. What do you think the other one is? Yes, warehousing. What is a warehouse? What is the purpose of a warehouse? Now, a warehouse may be defined as a commercial building where goods are temporarily stored or, or rerouted to other businesses. Now, they carry out basically two functions, an inbound function and an outbound function. Inbound, that prepare items for storage. So for example, packing and labeling, and even some minor production work, such as assembling component parts. So some warehousing are used just for temporary storage, some are used for minor production. So for example, think about a business that manufacturer's cell phone. It is possible that 
the cell phones themselves, so the shell of the phone is manufactured by one company, and it is possible that the batteries are manufactured by another company. Now, in order to get, of course, the cell phone is of no use without a battery. So the cell phones could come from point A to the warehouse, the batteries from point B to that warehouse, and the assembling is done there. So you get a complete product to pass on to your consumers. Now, of course, the outbound function is where shipping of goods are, are done to the final destination, the final consumer. So warehousing is very important. Now, warehousing bridges the time gap between when goods are available and when they're actually needed. So think about it. It's just a few days, can't even say weeks, a few days before Christmas. So businesses already are stocking up on things that they believe consumers will need for the Christmas holiday, right? So these things are available. They're already in, in storage, especially if they're imported. They're already here until the customer requires them. Now, there are various modes of transportation, and we're going to explore a few of them that are used within the logistics and supply chain operation. Now, what mode of transport do you know of? What mode of transport do you utilize? Write them down. I want to see how many you can list, and then you compare with what we have here. And of course, we're going to look at the purpose of these modes and their advantages and disadvantages. So let's go. Now, road transport. How important is road transport to logistics? Let us explore. Now, road infrastructures are large consumers of space, and we can attest to that. We see the traffic pile up on the roads on a daily basis, right? Now, it is the most commonly used form of transport, not only in Jamaica, but in most countries, and it is considered as the most flexible form of transport. Now, road transport include carrying passengers and freight, such as raw materials, as we mentioned earlier, from producers to manufacturers, as well as between the other elements of the distribution chain, wholesaler, retailer, to the final consumer. Now, the majority of road haulage tends to be carried out by relatively large trucks. We see them on the highways on a daily basis, but smaller delivery vans also play an important role. Now, with the advent of technology and more persons making online purchases, e-commerce has seen a large increase in the use of courier service vehicles. So these are smaller vehicles, they occupy less space, they can maneuver the traffic, and so your delivery can be made on time. Now, are there advantages of road transport? Think about it. What are some advantages of road transport? Write them down. Of course, you want to have your own to compare with what I will share. Now, there are many advantages, but again, because of time constraints, we will focus on the main ones. So I want you to go ahead and add at least three more to each advantage that we will look at. All right? Now, it is fast over short distances. So road transport is fast over short distances. It can reach places inaccessible to other forms of transport. Think about that. Now, other forms of transport rely on road transport to connect with terminals such as airports and docks. Because I have never seen an airplane or a ship on the highway, right? They can't go further than the port or the dock, so they rely heavily on road transport to take products to their final destination. So road transport is extremely, extremely important. Now what disadvantages can you come up with? All right, so write those down. Disadvantages of road transport. Now it is expensive to operate in large congested cities. Yes, pile up of traffic, not going anywhere, but the engines are, engines are still running. That's costly, right? Now, it is subject to mechanical breakdown. And in our Jamaican setting, the roads will also um, help to depreciate the vehicles. Now, loads are limited in size and weight. So regardless of the size of the trailer that you see on the highway, 
it has a limit. There's a certain weight and certain size that it is allowed to carry legally. Now, it causes considerable pollution. Yes, all that emission of gases causes considerable pollution. What's our next mode of transport that we'll be looking at? Right, so we'll be looking at rail transport. Now, rail transport is not so common in Jamaica or in the Caribbean, but it is very useful in the logistics and supply chain operations in other, other countries. So, railways consist of a traced path which wheeled vehicles are bound. I'm sure you have an idea. If you have not seen a, a, a train itself, you probably have seen a, a train track or even a virtual one, right? So it's traced path on which wheeled vehicles are bound. Now, rail is by far the land transportation mode, offering the highest capacity, meaning it can carry tons of tons, heavy weight, carrying thousands of tons. So rail transportation is very useful in carrying large number of cargo. Now, in light of more recent technological development, rail transportation also includes what we call monorails and maglev. So we're going to pause a little and look at these two. They might be new terms to you. All right, so look, let us examine monorail. Now, the prefix mono meaning what? So the prefix mono meaning one. So what is that telling you, right? So basically, monorail is a system of rail transportation that consists of a single rail. All right, so as you can see here, so monorail, it's a, train, a system of train transportation consisting of a single rail, typically elevated with the train suspended from it. All right? And then newer technology, maglev train. So maglev, short for magnetic levitation. What comes to mind when you hear that? Magnetic levitation. And if you say magnets, then you are correct. So basically, this type of train consists of two sets of magnets. One set to push the train up, to repel and push the train up off the track, and another set to move the train, the elevated train ahead. Of course, taking advantage of the lack of friction, which increases speed. And for an efficient logistics and supply chain system, speed is important. It's important for on-time delivery. It's important to stay on schedule. It saves time, it saves money, and it conforms to customer requirements. Everybody wants their items to be delivered on time, right? Now, are there advantages of rail transport? Of course. What do you think these are? Write some down, good? Now, it is faster than road transport over long, longer distances. So that's one advantage of rail transport. It causes less pollution than road transport. Fuel use is more economical than road transport. And it operates on a schedule. So it avoids road blockages. You know exactly when to expect the train. Good. Now, are there disadvantages of rail transport? Think about it. Based on the advantages, what could be some possible disadvantages or drawbacks of using rail transport? Now, the routes are restricted by railway lines and stations. So obviously, where there are no tracks and where there are no railway stations, then you won't have trains operating in those areas. So it's limited. It is less economical than road for short journeys. So if you're using rail transport, it's best to use it for longer journeys. It is often not suitable for perishable products. And again, because of the long distance that it travels, um, perishable items might not get sufficient air, even if it is, even if, if, it's, if it's refrigerated, right? No. Another mode of transport, doesn't look so familiar, right? Pipelines, what do we use pipelines to, to carry though? And I'm sure mo most persons would say water, all right? So pipelines, pipeline routes are practically unlimited. And this is because they can be laid on land or, or even under water, 
right? And pipelines transport commodities such as such as oil, gas, and, and water. Now, are there advantages of using pipelines? Of course, if we're using pipelines, then the need for unfriendly, environment, environmentally unfriendly vehicles, right? So we don't need these vehicles if we're using pipelines to transport water, gas, or oil. Good. Now, the maintenance cost of pipelines is low, compared with other modes of transportation. And cost is important. It's important that a business cut cost. Are there disadvantages of pipeline? How many can you come up with? Now, products that can be moved are limited to liquid. And that's understandable, right? Leakages can go undetected. Remember that these pipelines are under the land or underwater. So these leakages can go undete undetected for a long period of time, causing wastage and potential environmental damage. Now another mode of transport, air transport. Now air transport is the most expensive form of transport. And it is constantly expanding in the volume of passengers and freight that it handles. Now, it is by far the most important method for the movement of people in and out of a country. Now, air transport also makes a major contribution in transporting goods. So even though the main purpose of the aircraft is to transport people, there are aircrafts that also transport cargo. What are the advantages of using air transportation? Think about it. Now, it is the fastest form of transport. So you're talking about speed, you're talking about on-time arrival. You want to think about air transportation. Fastest form of transport. It operates on a timetable, mostly on direct routes. So it's predictable. You can tell, you can give an estimated time of arrival or an estimated time of departure. Shorter transit times reduced insurance cost. So basically, the insurance cost will, deter, will be dependent on the distance that you're traveling. And of course, there are disadvantages. How many can you come up with? Let us hear them. So high operational cost. And because of the high operational cost, then it reflects in high freight rates. The weight and size of cargo are limited. Of course, you have to consider some form of balance in the air so you cannot overload the aircraft. So the size and weight of cargo are limited. It is sometimes affected by adverse weather conditions. So any type of weather condition that decrease visibility will affect air transport. And of course, we have maritime or sea transport, a major form of transportation within the logistics and supply chain operation. Now, marine transportation is the most effective mode to move large quantities of cargo over long distances, right? Because of the physical properties of water. So you know that water is buoyant, so it allows the ships to take very heavy load. Now, the main maritime routes are composed of coast, seas, lakes, rivers, and channels. You know, channels such as the Panama Canal and other channels that are used to, to accommodate ships or vessels. Now, marit marine transport is linked to heavy industries such as steel and petrochemical facilities. Now, we're going to briefly take a look at some of the main forms of sea transport in commercial shipping because there are various kinds of vessels and they're designed for different purposes. So let us briefly look at some of these main forms of sea transport in commercial shipping. So we'll be looking at passenger liners, cargo ships, tram ships, and special freighters. So when you hear of passenger liners, what comes to mind? Passenger liners. Yes, and I can hear somebody actually saying 
cruising, right? So these are built especially for passenger travel, particularly cruising. By bringing tourists into a country, of course, they provide income from tourism. So that helps to build the economy, right? Now, they sometimes carry some cargo and tend to follow fixed routes and set timetables. What about cargo ships, as the term suggests, right? So the main purpose is to deliver cargo. They tend to operate on fixed routes and regular timetable. Like again, when they operate on fixed routes, you're guaranteed you can have an estimated time of when your goods will arrive at the port, right? Now, they also tend to sail from a port, and this is crucial, they tend to sail from a port even if some of the scheduled cargo did not arrive at the port in time for loading. What does that mean? So it simply means that a cargo ship will not wait on you if you are late, right? Turnaround time for these vessels are very important, right? Staying to schedule, save time, save money. Again, on time, being on time is a crucial factor within an effective logistics system. Good? Now, tramp ships. Have you ever heard the term tramp ships? What are these? What's the purpose of a tramp ship? All right, so these are actually cargo ships that have no timetable or schedule. So as opposed to the, the regular cargo ship or the liner ship that operates on a schedule, the tramp ship, they have no timetable or schedule. And therefore, they will carry all types of cargo they can manage to basically any part of the world. Now, these vessels are chartered through a charter party. So it's an agreement between the shipper and the shipping company. To charter, you can charter for just a journey. You can charter for a voyage, right? Now, special freighters. And by the term special, we mean that these are vessels that are built. They are made for special purposes to take special items. So let us look at some examples. So container ships. And as the name suggests, a container ship would take what? So it's designed to take containers, right? Bulk carriers. Bulk carriers are designed to carry items that are carried in bulk, such as iron, ore, steel, and even grains. Things that are not individually packaged and they are loaded loose onto the ship. Those are referred to as bulk carriers, right? We also have tankers. And we are, we are familiar with tankers. So tankers are used to carry liquid, water, oil, gas, liquid, right? Ferries. What are ferries? Right, so ferries are designed to carry wheeled vehicles. So when we talk about ferries, you will hear the term roll on or roll off. So basically, motor vehicles, any wheeled vehicle can be rolled on or rolled off the vessel. And in some cases, they can be driven on and off the vessel. So these ferries are designed to take wheeled vehicles. So these are our special freighters, the main ones. Of course, you can do further research and you can add to this list. Are there advantages of marine transport? Now, as mentioned earlier, the natural buoyancy of water enables ships to carry very heavy loads, you know, which give economies of scale. So that's another new term that we're coming up on, economies of scale. Now, if you're a grade 11 student, you would have been introduced to production. So you should be familiar with the term economies of scale. So what is this talking about? So basically, economies of scale refers to the reduction in the price of producing and distributing a product, so the unit price. Reduction in the unit price, unit meaning one, of producing and distributing a product in proportion to the, the increased size of the operation of the firm. So in other words, when the firm increases output, then they will enjoy certain benefits. So for example, if a firm starts to invest in technology as opposed to manual labor, it means that now with machines, you're able to produce more in less time. There you're benefiting from lower labor cost. You have less staff to pay. And in addition to that, if you're producing more, it means you need additional raw material. 
and by purchasing in bulk, you will benefit from certain discounts, right? So economies of scale are basically the benefits of large scale production. And of course, it aids in international trade. And we can attest to that. Most of the things that we consume, we do not, we do not um, produce them locally. And without marine transport, they probably would not be able to get to us, right? So it's very important in international trade. It causes relatively small amounts of pollution compared to road transport. Now, are there disadvantages of marine transport? Of course, there are disadvantages. Any idea what these are? Write them down. Now, it can carry cargo only as far as the ports, and we mentioned that earlier. So as a result, it's dependent on other forms of transport, such as road transport, in order to get cargo to its final destination. It is a relatively slow method, extremely slow method of moving freight, slow but sure. It is particularly affected by climatic conditions, so any conditions at sea that will affect, um, can affect the marine transport. Similarly to air transport. Now, let us take a brief look at the impact of logistics. What impact does logistics have on a business? Now, logistics can improve competitiveness. And of course, competitiveness is not a bad thing. It means that you have to stay ahead of your competitor in order to survive in business, in order to do well. You have to ensure that you can keep your share of the market or add to your share of the market. You want to ensure that you can provide goods and services at a cost less than that of your competitor. And logistics can help you to do that. Or good logistics, I should say, can help you to achieve that. Now, logistics aims to meet the increasing demands of customers at the lowest possible cost. Now, effectively managing the flow of materials, products, information from the supplier to end consumer is all a part of the logistics system. And I mentioned earlier that logistics is closely related to marketing. Here, we're conforming to customer requirements. Now, logistics can also achieve what we call comparative cost advantage. What is this, though? Now, comparative cost advantage refers to being able to produce a commodity at a lesser cost than your competitor. And we explored that earlier. Now, how can logistics help? So, logistics can contribute to achieving this aim, particularly through what is called outsourcing. Have you ever heard the term outsourcing? What is outsourcing? So let us briefly examine, examine outsourcing. So outsourcing, sometimes referred to as contracting out. We're familiar with that term, right? Refers to accessing goods or services by contract from an outside supplier. Now, it is used by businesses to reduce cost or improve efficiency by relocating tasks, operations, could be jobs, or other processes to an external contracted party. So for example, a firm that focuses on manufacturing would probably want to outsource their transportation services. So you want to use all your resources and focus on manufacturing, that's what you do best. So in allowing another company to transport your products to your final consumer, you save resources, you save time, additional risk is associated with doing your own transportation. So for example, if the manufacturing firm decides to do their own transportation or offer their own transportation services, it means that they would probably have to own a fleet of vehicles. Now think about it. What are some responsibilities that comes with owning a fleet of vehicles? Of course, you'd have to get drivers for these vehicles. That's more people to pay, right? You will have to insure and maintain these vehicles. Of course, right? So think about outsourcing your warehousing. Instead of owning a warehouse, you allow another business that focus, 
focuses on warehousing to carry out that function of your business, right? So in that, you save money and you're able to focus on your core activity, which is manufacturing. All right, so this is an example. Um, a manufacturer may outsource some elements of its production to a third party in another country. And when we talk of outsourcing, you will generally hear the term third party. So who is a third party? So when you hear of third party logistics, so third party logistics providers are basically companies that offer any form of um, logistics services or any service related to the logistics and supply chain. And some were mentioned earlier. So you think about transportation, you think about accounting services, you think about warehousing. Our, our call centers are perfect examples of outsourcing where the call centers offer services on behalf of other businesses locally and overseas. Now, the benefits of outsourcing, it can free up cash flow, free up personal and time resources for the company. It can result in cost savings due to lower labor cost. It enables the company to focus on its core business competencies. And it tends to be directed to organizations who are specialists in the required services, such as a transportation company, right? So our key points for today, things I want you to remember that logistics is more than just transportation. All right. So remember the definition of logistics. The supply chain is a network between a company and its suppliers. And the key components are procurement, inventory management, transportation, and warehousing. Remember the different modes of transport, road, rail, pipelines, air, maritime or marine or sea transport. Logistics can improve competitiveness by meeting the increased demands of customers at the lowest possible cost. And logistics can also achieve comparative cost advantage primarily through outsourcing.